Maria, first of all, amazing job on the show. I absolutely love it. I binged it last night. Um, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about Birdie and what attracted you to the role? Um, Birdie is kind of the matriarch of the Kinsella family. She's kind of at the top end of the family. Her brother, Frank Kinsella, runs the whole operation um, because their other brother is in jail. Um, she's really interesting to me. Well, when I got the scripts first, they kind of sent them all to me and I read them and I just one, I just was page turning. I just, I really was compelled by it and wanted to, I just kept wanting to read and to find out, well, what do they do next? And what other terrible decision do they make? And um, I really liked it. And then uh, Peter McKenna, the writer, and Dermot, the director who set it up, they called me and said, you know, would you like to have a meeting and talk about her? And the really interesting thing from my point of view was they hadn't really decided exactly who she was. I mean, they had written her, uh, Peter had written her and they knew that they wanted to have a woman at the top end of the family um, just so that they would create the different dynamic that a woman would in that position rather than another man um, and they knew kind of the impact they, the strands she would pull together but they hadn't really decided who she was and they were so they were kind of saying you know do you like her would you be interested in, and what do you think she how did she get there so that's brilliant present as an actor you know you get to really put the character get them off the page and put them up on legs and um i really enjoyed trying to imagine how she could get there because she's she's fairly contradictory you know she's sure. um, she's loving and she's tender and she's family is everything to her and loyalty is enormous for her but she's also very ruthless and um and practical above everything and she sees the need to do things that are um that are difficult and illegal and in for many people immoral but she sees that they're uh you know the means um the end justifies the means for her and it was really interesting to figure out how she could think, how did she get to that place where she could think, where she justified things like that to herself. I also invented, actually, I haven't told anybody else this yet, but um, I kind of, in, we really had a lot of fun dressing her. Right. Because, um, and I hope people will get a good kind of laugh out of how just slightly wrong she gets it all the time you know she's she she doesn't have her own kids at home she's lots of time in to, for her personal grooming she obviously likes a bit of style and a bit of bling and she has a bit of money to throw at it so time and money but she's stuck in 1994 and she can't and she just constantly sort of gets it a little bit um wrong and we we really had fun trying to make that work myself and Joan but we decided that we, that she would be really into fun fur. So yes. she's got a lot of like um, fake fur jackets and coats and things like that. But we decided that she's probably like secretly a member of PETA, but in real life, she would have no problem with ordering like a hit on somebody. Sure. But she would, yeah, but she would never ever be mean to an animal. So it was all of these kind of things that just made me think like that would be really fun and interesting character to play and try and um, make people care about, believe, make them believe in her and make them care about her. Right, right. Well, you answered my next question, which was what did you want to bring to the role of Birdie that wasn't necessarily on the page? I mean, you brought it, it seemed like you infused that character with a lot more than was actually there at the time. Um, well, Michael returns to the family. It's almost like the prodigal son returning back to a family. Can you talk to me about the effects that the family feels with Michael's return? Oh, I think it's, I think it's enormous. Their whole, um, there used to be a tradition in, in older Ireland, like older than this, uh, drama, this drama is set. Um, when people emigrated at the beginning of the 1900s and even up through the 20s and 30s and 40s, I've seen photographs in my own, in my family and in my mother's family um, and her father's family, where people went away and they used to do this thing where they would, and they were big family, were Catholic families, right? There's loads of them. So, but they would line people up on the wall for a family photo and they would leave a space where the person had gone. Wow. So it would go like, you know, Sean, Tom, Pauline, space, because they were gone to America, Joe, space, because they were gone to London or whatever. I thought it was the most incredible um, 
kind of visual clue of what was happening in a family, just this space in a photograph rather than bunching them together and, and just know, knowing themselves the person had gone. And that's kind of what this family has done while he's been in jail. They've kind of, they've held this space for him. I would imagine there would have been, you know, constantly a kind of a chair that was Michael's chair in Birdie's house that she would, when people come in, she's like, oh no, don't sit there, it's Michael's chair. Even though he's been inside for eight years, they've been kind of holding this space open for him and and just waiting and waiting for his return. And uh, it's it's a really big thing. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of tangled relationships, you know, he's very close to his family. There's also a lot of enormous dysfunction there that he knows is bad for him. Mm. Um, they all know little bits of their relationships are kind of bad for them. But there's also just like this big sort of magnetic vortex in the middle that they just are compelled to be there and to keep creating and maintaining these patterns and relationships. And it's, yeah, it's fascinating. You know, there's an interesting scene that happens throughout one of the episodes where Bertie actually confronts Iman uh, and they and they have a fa like a face off. Uh, and we get a little bit of, uh, at least verbally, uh, a little bit about Bertie's past. Um, what would you like to explore in Bertie's past uh, throughout the course of the series? I'd love to see um, I'd love to see her relationship with her husband. I feel that she was, you know, she she was younger then, obviously. I feel that she was a little bit more naive, even though she'd come up through this family, very violent family. She certainly had to witness and put up with a lot of that all through her own childhood. And then she's totally sidelined for the main job because she's a woman uh, in that. So there's all that going on for her. But I think she really did love her husband. And there was a, a, she had a great hope back then that things might be different from for them, that they might somehow they were never going to leave the family. But I, I and she was so smart, right. is so smart. But I think she always had ambitions that they might kind of just sideline into the more legit end of things. You know, maybe they'd be the people fronting the garage, then they'd be out on the jobs. You know, but then of course he dies in 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 violence as part of the world. So something died within her. Then I'd love to go back to before that time and just really explore the amount of hope that she had or the ways she thought that she might go, you know, go parallel, not out of the family, but kind of parallel. And it's certainly clear that that's the vision she has for the younger ones, that they really want them to have a different way that they, they you know, crime is certainly the way that they've earned their money, but they want the boys, the younger boys to, to, have, a diff to have different opportunity. I think uh, Peter McKenna's s scripts are amazing. Can you talk to me about working uh, with Peter and the collaboration process, working with him about fleshing out some of the stories and characters? Well, he's really open. That's amazing. Um, like he really invited all of us to talk about our characters and before we began. And so he began, you know, fleshing out things from stuff that we would say that we added into it. And then um, if if you came upon a scene and for some reason it wasn't working, he, he was there all the time and um, and you could ask him and, and, and say, is that my thing going? I'm so sorry. No, it's um, okay. That could have been mine easily. I know, I turn them. Um, he, he, he was on set almost all the time and he was totally open to reworking anything that was not working. Or if he just said, I really, do I need to say that line? Could I not just give him like a serious look because I really think that's all it needs. And he'd be like, yeah, great. You know, he, he, he wanted us to succeed. Um, he was more, uh, his, his intention was more about that than any kind of preciousness about his words. So, wow. yeah, it's, what more can you ask for, really? It's brilliant. Now, the last question I have for you is, does Bertie think that Frank is handling every situation that the family kind of gets involved with properly? I think that Bertie thinks that there are things that she definitely would have done differently. And, you know, she loves Frank and she's always been... Well, first of all, she would never show to anybody else that she was not on his side because that would be causing divisions and she's not about that. But um, and she's always been protective of him. He's been bullied and, you know, he's had a diff tough time. She's always been really 
there for him and protective of him. But I do think she's a little bit resentful as well of the power that he has. I do think that she does believe that she might do or have done a better job. Well, like, <laughs> Maria, thank you so much for your time. The show is brilliant. You are a legend and amazing in it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. So nice. Uh, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching all the next episodes myself. I haven't seen them all, but sure. See you again somewhere. Thank you. Absolutely. So good. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.